Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. So I've got some updates on the Madeline Soto case. Uh, a few things that kind of dropped uh, mostly today, but in the last couple days. Uh, the biggest is the 911 calls dropped to today, and I'm going to play those. And also an update on why we are not going to see the medical examiner's report. As well as I'm going to go through a bit of a body cam video of Stephen Stearns when he was transferred from the Orange County Jail on 33rd Street in Orlando to Osceola County Jail. So um, let me pl pull up the 911 calls first and we'll go through those. 911, what is the location of the emergency? Uh, okay, what's going on, Vinny? Please fire medical. No, it's not a medical issue. We we have a missing child since this morning. We already called three times, and the police didn't show up yet. Are you looking? Or yes. do you know? Okay. Yes. Okay. I see it right here for you. Uh, Yes, ma'am. I see it. This is waiting for a deputy to respond. They haven't. They haven't come here yet. I, I'm aware, ma'am. I see it. It's waiting for a deputy to respond. You're waiting for a deputy to respond? Yes, ma'am. And how long? What do we need to wait? It's, it's a child missing. I understand that, ma'am, but I'm just not able to give out ETA. I, I'm, I don't know when they'll be there. So how long do we need to wait? This is an I'm, emergency. Ma'am, we we have the information, but it just it, they're trying to get there someone as soon as possible. So this is not important for you guys, really? Then we are very busy in the area. Look, I understand they'll be there as soon as they can, okay? Hmm. Nine one one. So that's the first one. They don't tell us who who the calls are from. I, I'm thinking that maybe from Grandma. It could be from Jen, but I think that sounds more like grandma to me. And you could tell, obviously, she's not happy that they are taking a long time to get to her and to find out what happened to their missing child. So let's pull up the second one. Also of note, they redacted some things, so there are some drops in the audio. One, what is the location of your emergency? Um, okay, police are medical. Hi, um, I called not that long ago reporting a missing child. I just wanted to know how long the cops are going to take to get here. Okay, hold on. Let me open up the call and let's see. The call is still currently pending to have the deputies respond out there, but we don't have any available deputies. We still have the call up, though, holding. Okay, so, so no one's on their way yet? Not yet, no. Mm, does it take long for them to respond to the call? If there's a big emergency in the area um, and there's nobody, there's no units available, they put the calls on hold. But as soon as one becomes available, they respond to the next pressing call. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we just need one here urgently. So I understand. Um, we still have the call. We still have the call holding. Yes. Yes. Yep. We still have the call holding for them. I'll go ahead and update them with the information. All right, thank you, because this happened yeah. very recently, so we just want to get everyone here. She's been missing since 8 a.m., so we want to get everything done as soon as possible to try to find her. I understand. Okay. Thank Hi. you. 911, what's the location of your emergency? Um, it's... And is there a specific apartment number, ma'am? Uh, and do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, police, possibly. I'm reporting a missing child. Okay. And what is the name of the business there, ma'am? The business? Um, okay. And the child that you're trying to report missing, are you calling on behalf of the of the parent? Yes, yes, on behalf of the mother. She's missing. Okay. Okay. And then so, and ma'am, how old is the child? She's... And could I go ahead and get her name? Yes, it's and is she white, black, or Hispanic? She's white. Okay. Blonde, and dirty blonde hair, blue eyes. Okay, hold on with me here. 
And then what color shirt and pants was she last seen wearing? Um, hold on, let me ask. Then, um, what color shirt and, like, what was she last wearing? Hold on, uh, we're finding out. Okay, and then how long has it been, though, since you guys have last seen her? Since this morning. She was dropped off, um, at school this morning, and apparently she never showed up. We called, um, everyone we knew, no one's seen her. Okay. And then, so, ma'am, I just want to confirm, though, was she last seen from this address? Is this oh. where you guys last saw her? No, 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 no. Um, she was last seen at the church next to Hunters Creek Middle School. I think it's called Peace Church. I'm not sure of the exact address. Uh, she was wearing a dark green hoodie, I believe. What is the name of the church? Uh, I think it's called, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called Peace Church. It's the one right next to Hunters Creek Middle School. It's the, well, no, no, no. Got it. It's across the street Middle. from it? Um, I, I believe so, yeah. There's, there's two. I just forgot about the other one. It's not Focal Point Church. It's um, well. Is it Peace United Methodist Church? Yes. yes okay. It's that one. Okay. Is she diagnosed with any medical mental conditions at all? Um, I know she takes medication for ADHD. And I think that I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. Sorry, bear with me here. And is she known to carry anything on her person, like a pocket knife, a pepper spray, anything at all like no, that? No, okay. no, nothing like that. Does she have a cell phone that she might keep on her person? She doesn't. She had one when she left at home conveniently today. Okay. Right there. Okay. And ma'am, what is your name? My name is... Okay, perfect, thank you. And just so we recognize you when we arrive there, though, at the advance to come meet with you guys, are you ma'am, white, black, Indian, Asian, or Hispanic? I'm Hispanic. And what color shirt and pants will you be wearing? Uh, pants. Dark wash jeans, uh, I have a green cardigan on and a white shirt. Thank you. And I just need to verbally confirm as all. Well, do you have any at all weapons on your person? No, I do not. Okay. All right. And are you going to be waiting for us inside? Um, yeah. Uh, I'll probably, I'll come outside. I need to see through glass. I'll see when you guys show up. Okay, perfect then. So then I'll get a call place for service. We'll have deputies out there to the to come and make a report with you and to come and assist with trying to find your, okay? Okay, her mother and my, um, they're going to the school to double check and everything, but from what we know, she wasn't there. So they should okay. be back soon too because it's right next to the that's, school. Yeah, that's fine. So if, if at least one of you remains there though, it's to meet with an officer, that's more than fine, okay? Yeah, I'll be here, I'll be here. Okay, then, all right, thank you so much, ma'am, and I'll go ahead and let you go. We'll be out there as quickly as we can, okay? Okay. All right, bye-bye, ma'am. Thank you so much, bye-bye. All right, so it sounds like Jen nor Stefan made any 911 calls, or at least any that have been released, and they were highly redacted. I don't know why they didn't leave Madeline's name on there because we obviously know it was, that's who they were calling in regards to. But uh, I think potentially one of them was grandma and it sounds like maybe uh, an aunt or a friend made the last one. But definitely while, even though they took out some bits of, you know, and they, in those calls, they took out some uh, pieces of information like location addresses and what have you. I do think 
it's given us more information. Uh, and it sounds like Jen and potentially Stefan, uh, they weren't there when that last third call was uh, made. Again, I think it's potentially that those were not in order either because the first one sounds like grandma. The second one sounds like, well, we've already made these calls and we're waiting. How long does it usually take? So I think it may, they were out of order um, the way that Wesh put them up. But uh, either way, those are the three calls that were released today. Um, those are released from the Orange County Sheriff's Office because you remember initially uh, she was reported missing to Orange County because Hunter's Creek Elementary School, I mean Hunter's Creek Middle School, excuse me, Hunter's Creek Middle School is in Orange County and then they actually live, uh, Jen and Maddie actually live in Osceola County. And if you remember from my previous videos, Orange and Osceola County are right next to each other and and they're not too far away, you know, where they live and where the school is. It's about 15 or so minute drive so definitely those two counties were you know working together on this case from pretty much the get-go especially you know once they found out that they lived in Kissimmee and then she went to school in uh, Orlando in Hunters Creek uh, the big another big update we got today was that the autopsy report that we've all been anxiously awaiting for uh, well Due to a state statute deeming it confidential, according to the District 9 Medical Examiner's Office, uh, they informed everyone today that the report could not be shared due to uh, the statute is Florida Statute 406 uh, and 1352B. Uh, uh, and that statute states an autopsy report of a minor whose death was related to an act of domestic violence is exempt to being public record. The statute adds that only a surviving parent of the deceased minor may view and copy the autopsy report if the surviving parent did not commit the act of domestic violence, which led to the minor's death. So basically at this point, it would have to be Jen or it would have to be her father that would release that to the public if and when they decided to. Or it's going to end up also, that this will come out to some degree uh, by the time the trial, you know, comes forward, of course. And we will know who's being charged with her, her death once charges drop for that. But as of right now, Stefan still doesn't have charges for her murder and Jennifer still hasn't been arrested that I've been able to find. There was rumors today all over Facebook and social media that Jennifer Soto was arrested. She was not. Uh, you, you know, definitely it's really hard. A lot of this stuff comes out. Uh, definitely be careful with the speculations on that, all the rumor mills. Uh, as soon as she's arrested, it will come up in the arrest, uh, you know, in the inmates, you know, for definitely, because she'll be arrested by Osceola County. So it will definitely become public record uh, fairly quickly when she's, um, when she's booked into the jail. So again, it really does, it's highly disappointing. And I was afraid of that, that that whole statue, the whole state thing would become a problem when it comes to her autopsy and it's frustrating it really really is because we are all you know advocating we are all looking for justice for Maddie and you know we want to know what happened to her we want to know we obviously know she was abused and she was murdered but we want to know you know what the cause of death was so I we're just gonna have to wait a little longer uh, and another next update would be that uh, Fox 35, they actually spoke with uh, the state attorney about the ongoing uh, investigation and why things have kind of been so quiet. And as much as we all want to know, what he has to say makes a lot of sense. And in the grand scheme of things, as much as we all want to know, it, Justice for her is paramount. That's number one. And we don't want to have, you know, a tainted jury, tainted jury pool out there. 
Um, they're already dealing with that in some of these other big cases. I mean, Idaho is having a big hoo-ha about that right now, uh, as far as even Delphi. But again, that's the basis of what he's stating. So um, let me play the clip from Fox 35 on that. I have some other questions that I want to ask you about. Any update that you can give on the Maddie Soto case? I know when we spoke with Kissimmee Police yeah. at their last news conference, mm-hmm. they said they're still waiting on medical examiner's report. Do we have an update on that, how she was killed, where she was killed, any yeah. timeline of murder charges? Yeah, so we are working still closely with our justice partners and Kissimmee Police Department to um, gather all the information that we can. Um, and so if we um, are able to, we will present that case and you'll have an update when um, we're able to speak about it. But no update on releasing any information about how she was killed. Yeah, so that's all good things that have to stay within um, the investigation is open and ongoing. Uh, and so the integrity of our cases depend on um, that information not being readily available because uh, the last thing we need is all when we saw uh, with uh, cases where you have to go out and find jurors from different jurisdictions and you have to you know, bring in jurors to try a case because the case has become so well known to the people in the community that we can't present a fair trial. So we want to have, we want to be able to present a fair trial. We want that case to be tried by the people of our circuit, um, and the people of our circuit to determine what's the best result for that case. One follow up: Is that a concern right now? I know when I spoke with uh, experts, they said because of the high profile nature Correct. of this case, it, it may have to be moved. Yeah, so that's exactly the reason why. So we, the less the less likelihood that we can. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that you are involved and that the public knows that we are working hard on the case. But when information and facts are, are like, you know, to be leaked and, uh, and things then take a turn uh, where those type of things have to happen, where we have to make a change of venue, where we have to um, import a jury and uh, sequester a jury for a whole month or, or two months, depending on how long the case is going to take to present. And so it's a great cost to the, like, to the citizens because taxpayers are paying for that. And um, it, I think it really takes the out of the hands of the peers that should be trying the case. So the law wants you to look at you know, the peer, your peers should be trying the case, not somebody from a different community, somebody from your own community should be the person, the people trying your case. So like he said, the last thing we want is to have to deal with moving this to another you know, jurisdiction. It's already going to be tough enough, I think, in Osceola County, which is uh, where they're going to try it. Um, and even Orange County could be could be difficult. But definitely it's going to be, you know, it's going to be hard to get a good jury. But I think it's definitely possible. And with them holding so much back, it's going to make it, it's going to make it easier. And his trial for these 60... 60 sh you know charges and all these horrible horrific things that he did to maddie it's it's right around the corner so we've got you know a trial coming up in may next month so we don't have to wait that much longer uh as far as the murder or homicide charges well we haven't even really begun because no one's been charged with that yet so that one uh, we're gonna still have to wait and see looks like all right, so this is the car body cam, and this was actually on uh, March 1st. He was moved, Stephen Stearns was moved from the Orange County Jail, Orange County Jail in, on 33rd Street in Orlando to Osceola County Jail. He was moved before they discovered Madeline's body, and this was also before that presser that day. So uh, it's going to be kind of hard to hear him in the back seat. The the uh, officer is very easy to hear. Uh, of note, uh, do not get upset with this with this cop because his job. He's the transporter. He's on video. He's got to do a job, and I know it made my blood boil and it pissed me off how nice he was to him. This small talk, but we got to put it aside because this is this is evidence. So I mean he's. You know, he's kind of in a rock at a hard place as far as that's concerned. And finally, and most importantly, um, thanks to the docket and to Plunder. This video is actually from Plunder, but the docket got a hold of the body cam for us all to uh, be able to see. Uh, I'm going to put both of their uh, channel links in the information of the video. I highly recommend subscribing to both. Uh, both of them are excellent channels and Plunder 
has done some amazing deep dives as well into um, Madeline's case. She she takes another twist on things and she's gone into a lot of other stuff that I haven't gone into. So there's always something else to to learn from other YouTubers. I, I love it. I really do. The true crime community can be amazing. Really, it can be. So uh, let's check it out. I will pause it a couple times. I'm going to try to boost the audio when uh, when Monster Boy talks. But it is hard to hear, so if you have uh, earphones or, or um, anything like that, this would be the best time to put them in. I'm gonna make it warm for you, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Can you feel that? Okay. okay. LT leaving the jail now. Pro probably less, sir, because we're taking the turnpike down to 192. So we're taking I-4 to the turnpike. So I did, sir. I texted him. Yes, sir, he did. Thank you, sir. Bye. How's the temperature feel? Better than it was. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't... 
don't know why they don't do that. You know, why don't why don't they just kind of like at least give you a blanket? You know. Yeah, but my core temperature was down. You told me it took me that it was like a degree or two lower than it should have been. Wow. I couldn't regulate sleeping on bare metal. The first night I was on a concrete floor with a roll of toilet paper for a pillow and nothing else. Begging for a blanket, we had to sleep on for like two days. So he's complaining. Uh, this officer's nice and trying to make it warmer in the car. I, this may have been a cooler morning in Florida. We have had those lately. Uh, and he's complaining that he had to sleep on the bare concrete floor at the jail. And he didn't even have a pillow or a blanket. He had a roll of toilet paper. And that was it. Poor little Steve Stephen so you know Stearns, you know with everything he put Maddie through, I do not feel the least bit sorry for him. I don't. <sighs> Oof. That sounds rough, man. forgive my cough. I've been trying to get rid of it for the past like two or three days and prior to that I had a really bad cold and you know I, I like those man but have you ever tried the berry ones? The recall of berry? Phenomenal. The recall of berry ones um they almost taste like candy. Yeah, you gotta be careful with them because the honey ones are the same way. But once you get to the middle part, it's 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 rough though. Cause like it, it's got a punch. You're talking about the ones that have like the the it's like a like a gooey uh, menthol inside of it. The, the solid ones are just the honey. So you haven't had the ones that have like the the, the gooey part in the inside. Those those are good until you bite into it and you're like, whoa, like it's a it's a burst of like menthol. Yeah, it is. It is. He's trying to have a off conversation with him. Well, you know, he's probably trying to relate to him and you know, he can't talk to him about the case. But small talk, you never know, it could lead to something. But this drive is not that long. But yeah, it's really it's really difficult to hear this deputy talk to him about cough drops and how you know Stearns is going, "Oh, I like the honey ones." Yeah. I just got the regular Halls cherry. It's what I find at 7-Eleven, so Really? This tastes too medicinal. I can't get my kid to drink medicine. I gotta like mix it in his orange juice. For real, I gotta, I gotta like literally like. Here, drink, drink orange juice because it's good for you. It's vitamin C, and you know, because he will not. He'll literally like not drink his orange, his medicine, like at all. Look at Starnes looking over. Oh, I don't have anything to say about that. 
Yeah. You better not. awkward silence part of the trip. Very awkward.
So Stefan's in the back realizing his life is over. That's my thought. And this cop's going, this is very awkward. And this point, we still don't know the extent of his charges. We don't know that she's dead. But this guy probably does this every day. But it's awkward. It's an awkward position to be in. A car with a, a criminal, a monster like Stephen Stearns. You're not too tired, are they? Yeah. You're welcome. Now that's hard to hear, but I believe he was complaining about his hands and how tight the handcuffs were. It's a little difficult to decipher that particular uh, comment from the soft-spoken Stefan Stearns and over all the noise of the road. Like 
classical music? person that's ever said classical music. Yeah. Classical. Like what? Like like give me like a like a classical song or, or. You're the first one. I've never had anyone tell me classical music. And I actually like classical music. I do. I've never been to like like a like an orchestra or like like a like a like a like a concert like that. I've never been to one. song but let's say November Rain right by Guns N' Roses what Slash does with the guitar towards the end of that that whole track he literally makes that guitar cry like it's one of those moments where you're like wow wow Metallica. Metallica is my all-time favorite. Queen is yeah. I haven't seen their their that that latest movie with like like the 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 guy that. Uh, was on the sitcom. I haven't, I haven't seen the, the Queen movie yet. I even like Lincoln Park. He followed along the same lines as uh, um, this guy from uh, Soundgarden. Um, I forgot his name. Um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And then when he went over to Audio Slave, you ever heard Audio Slave? I mean, Audio Slave came out with like one album and it, 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 they just crushed it, crushed it. <laughs> but classical music, wow. Music I never got into was country. I just can't relate to it. I grew up in the city, so not much that I can relate to to driving a tractor and stuff like that on some of the songs that I've heard. You grew up on a farm? Yeah. Wow. Every day, 
was pushed away. We had this dumpster with a ramp that we pushed the wheelbarrow's full horse boot up into. And so we pushed it and the wheelbarrow tipped over and took me right with it into the dumpster full of horse boot. Okay, so first they talk about music. Apparently, Stearns likes classical music, but he can't really name a song or an artist he, he knows. Okay. Then he tells this deputy that he grew up on a farm. And he tells some story. It's hard to decipher the whole thing, but something about pushing a wheelbarrow full of uh, horse manure and he into a dumpster and then he fell in. <laughs> that that is good. Luckily it's just mostly grass and hills, so it's not But it stinks. Yeah. <laughs> why did you work there? Was it like your your family's farm? Yeah, yeah. So you're from Georgia? Sí, está todo bien. Estamos como a, a dos o tres minutos. Estamos en la 192, uh, casi doblando en la Samsung. Bye. Um, see, I, grew, I, I was born in Puerto Rico and then I was raised in Boston. So, hey, it was. I mean, I, I didn't grow up in Puerto Rico because I, I, my mom left there when I was two. And uh, I grew up more in Cambridge and like Boston area. So that was like a big city, you know, projects and, and that's... It's interesting, interesting locals there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely different. Definitely different. And then I moved down here, so. <laughs> San Diego area? California is nice. I've been there uh, twice. I've been there twice. Yeah, there's no there's no warmth to that water at all. So once we get here, I gotta go into the interview room and I gotta do the uh, arrest affidavit. Um, basically, you have two two warrants, so I'll let you know what those are. And that was it. See all the media out that window, out the windows there. Very, very unique uh, transfer ride from Orange County to Osceola County. 
So that's kind of where things are now. Uh, again, we are we're getting information, but we're not getting information. And I know it's frustrating, but again, we need to remember we're we're looking for justice for this girl right here on the screen for Maddie. And justice. Justice is not swift. It's definitely not as swift as we would like. And uh, it, it is frustrating, though, to me that we don't even have the murder charges on someone yet. I just feel like it's coming. You know, I mean, like I said, today we dropped, they, they dropped the 911 call, the update that we're not going to get the uh, autopsy report. At least not through the medical examiner's way. Due to Florida laws. But. They are, you know. Telling us that things are happening. So that that to me is appreciated. It, as much as it's frustrating. That that's kind of where we stand. But. But we all need to remember again. It's about justice for Maddie. And uh, I know a lot of you are here for her. Just as I am. And we just need to hang on and remember that she went through hell for years. She went through hell. And we just need to stick it out for her and make sure she gets, we keep, we stay out there. We stay at her voice because, you know, it's keeping her name out there, keeping, letting the state know, letting law enforcement, the DA's office, mostly the state, the DA's office know. That this girl right here is important. Every victim is important. And she is definitely important. And uh, we're here for her. We're here for her through it all. And um, also of note, I will post uh, the info also in the information of this video. Because I don't know if I'm going to have another update by then. Um, there is going to be a, uh, I think it's a visual or it's some sort of visual they're going to have uh, in Osceola County. I believe they're having it at the memorial site. It's going to be on April 13th. I think it's at 530 here in uh, Kissimmee, Florida. Well, actually or in St. Cloud, Florida, excuse me. So if you're a local um, I will post that info. I don't know if anyone will video it. I'm sure the news will be out there, but um, I'm hoping to attend. I will keep you guys apprised of that, but I will post the info uh, in the uh, information of this video as well as again the link to the to that Facebook group because that's the uh, there's a number of Facebook groups for her. They're all great uh, for this case, but there's one that was the original. And uh, they're the ones organizing that event. And they did the original visual for her. All right, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.